Tell me, where are you? Where are you? I can't see you anywhere. <laughs> we are in London. Yeah. <laughs> we are finally in the UK to visit Pete's mom in Robin Hood's Bay, a coastal village in North Yorkshire. We've arrived to London where we're gonna spend two days and then take a train to Yorkshire. I've been to London before, but it was 12 years ago. I enjoyed my time in the UK capital and was looking forward to these couple of days there, especially after we've spent almost four months in a tiny Bulgarian village deprived of the joys of civilization. In this video I'm gonna show you our first day in London and places we saw. The Millennium Bridge and the Thames Embankment, the Temple Quarters and a lovely little Koenigs Garden, Covent Garden and the Photographer's Gallery in Soho. In my previous visit I didn't see any of these spots. London is huge and two days here is nothing, so it wasn't easy to choose between places I wanted to see. We stayed at an Airbnb place we liked a lot. A quick apartment tour you can find in the link above, and I'm gonna show you a bit more in my next vlog. On the first day we wanted to walk for two hours and reach the area called Little Venice by foot. But we didn't make it as there were too many other interesting places on the way. The Borough Market is one of the most famous London food markets. Shame it's not like, for example, Istanbul's Egyptian market where you can taste everything. Pizza is just a casual market that every neighborhood has, but it was established in 1750. It's a region within the city. So all this is is the market for this particular region. No! After all we saw on Borough Market, uh, it felt like uh, we needed a proper breakfast. So I googled this breakfast club cafe and we checked it out. Nothing is better for breakfast than poached eggs. Here in Britain they are often served with smoked salmon on muffins. Muffins is not what you probably think it is. Uh, it is um, sort of white bread buns. Not sweet, of course. The Millennium Bridge was built in 2000, linking St. Paul's Cathedral on the north bank of the Thames with Tate Modern and Shakespeare's Globe in Sudak. The Globe Theatre opened in 1997 on the place where initially the famous Shakespeare's Globe was built in 1599. Since then it was destroyed and rebuilt many times. The modern theatre is based on indoor candlelit theatres known to Shakespeare and his contemporaries. I didn't know much about this theatre before, but after I read about it I wanted to visit it. So maybe next time.
Peter Hayes. <laughs> River now, catching up with Naomi and Pete, who are there in the front. Ah, it's our first day here out of two. <laughs> we arrived last night, and today we are walking all day, and tomorrow we'll be walking as well. Now we're going to see the Little Venice. It's a nice area next to the Regents Channel where you can take a boat down the river and uh, to camping market. The weather is nice, it's not too hot and not too cold, and it's not raining though it's cloudy. So it's perfect for a walking tour around the city. I visited London 12 years ago and stayed here for 11 days. And now it's only two days because we're going further to Yorkshire, to the Robin Hood's Bay, where Pete's mom lives. Traveling with a toddler is not easy, but it's possible and it's definitely better than not traveling at all. Temple quarters are laying around the Temple Church, the 12th century place of worship of the Templar Knights. This place became world famous due to the Da Vinci Code book. The Knights once controlled this part of London in the old days and set up two halls around the church before their organization dissolution in the 14th century. Now these strict magnificent buildings are occupied by numerous legal institutions, including barristers and solicitors' offices. Covent Garden area boasts of some of the best shopping destinations in London's West End. There used to be a fruit and vegetable market in the central square. Its name originates from the garden of the Abbey and Convent, which was used by the Abbot of Westminster Abbey as arable land and orchards in the 13th century. By the 18th century it had become notorious for its abundance of brothels. Today is just a shopping mecca for both Londoners and tourists. Here we go, I'm coming to the end now. Check this out guys, gonna make the three balls disappear in front of your oh, picture. Let <laughs> me get the stick and hot now. I'm gonna make the three balls disappear in front of their eyes. Hey lady, you might want to check this out. I'm make my balls disappear. In front of your eyes, from beneath this hat. The 
biggest attraction in a place like this for me is not shopping though, but just walking around and catching some good shots, making some good shots. I really like uh, observing people, especially abroad, they look so different to me. Uh, I especially noticed it this time, after spending uh, a lot of time in a remote place. I don't like shopping that much, uh, but occasionally I enjoy going to big cosmetic shops and buying something nice smelling. Luckily this time I went to Boots, it's a chain in England. It was a time for Naomi to sleep, so we found a little garden, the Phoenix Garden, uh, which is a local community garden in central London, established in 1948. It's nestled between busy Soho and Covent Garden areas, and it was set up on a car park in the 90s, which had itself been established on a World War II bomb site. It's the only one of the original seven Covent Garden community gardens to survive to this day. The name community garden actually means that it is run by a committee of volunteers comprising local residents and workers. I personally really love such tiny cozy gardens, uh, secret, kind of secret places in the middle of the city. Somebody just woke up. Piccadilly Circus is a world famous London's landmark. Everybody has seen its huge advertising plasmas. The square is always busy and connects Regent Street with the Piccadilly Street. I wondered what Piccadilly means and googled it, so it goes back to the 1611 or 12 when a man named Robert Baker acquired land in this area and prospered by making and selling Piccadillys or Piccadils. A Piccadill is a large broad collar or cutwork lace that became fashionable in the late 16th century. I didn't have time to visit numerous London's exhibitions, so I decided to follow my passion and have a look, at least at one, at the biggest photo gallery in the city. To be honest, I was not so inspired by these exhibitions. I saw much better photography concepts and works. Although I liked the space and their bookshop. I visited it just five minutes before it closed and bought a book. This book I've got there, why it doesn't have to be in focus, it's about modern photography and why it's uh, possible to break the rules. Uh, I like the books by this publishing house, it's uh, of a very good quality and um, very well planned and uh, easy to read. The 
gallery has recently opened uh, the outdoor exhibit space. I like such small spots uh, when everything is done for public. Uh, like here you can sit on the bench and listen to music which is playing, which is a part of the exhibition, I believe. And also watch people passing by, have a snack like we did. I'll be glad if you share with me your thoughts about uh, London and whether you were here or would like to visit it. That's it for today. In my next vlog I'm gonna take you to Camden Market and the Little Venice. We managed it on the second day. Thanks for watching. See you soon.